this is more like that free cheese on the mousetrap, right? You know, it's free, it looks nice, tempting. You try to bite it and boom, <laughs> gotcha. The mouse is in the trap. Okay, this is Mike Sigula from truefeeder.com and welcome to another video. So, today let's talk about universal basic income and why I think it is a trap. So for the last few years, we've been hearing more and more about universal basic income. The idea is that every citizen, for example, would get free income coming from government, which sounds really good in principle. Who then wants some free money, right? So you can sit on your ass, watch Netflix all day, don't have to go to work, which you hate so much, right? And the government just gives you free money, right? Sounds really good, right? <laughs> yeah, sounds really good. But I think this is more like that free cheese on the mousetrap, right? You know, it's free, it looks nice, tempting. You try to bite it and boom, <laughs> gotcha. The mouse is in the trap. This is what it is, in my view. Why? Because citizens that can run small businesses, for example, have a lot of freedom. We can decide what we do with our money, how much money we can make, etc. right? But if the government decides who is getting money, who is not getting money, and the opportunity to make money differently is destroyed, because for example, if you know, automation, this is the idea also a lot of people talk about that. Then what might start happening is that if you are not a good citizen, according to the government's standards, you're not gonna eat. <laughs> you didn't get your fourth booster this year? Why? The science is settled, come on. You're not gonna eat. <laughs> you know, we are seeing Similar things in China already with their social credit score system where citizens are scored depending on how well they behave according to the standards of communist Chinese government. And if you are a bad citizen, <laughs> you can't travel or, you know, your kids can't go to a better school and your rights are stripped away. And this is what's being implemented in China. Let me read this to you. So as of June, 2019, according to the National Development and Reform Commission of China, 27 million air tickets, as well as 6 million high-speed rail tickets had been denied to people who were deemed untrustworthy on a blacklist and 4.4 million untrustworthy people had chosen to fulfill their duties required by the law. Certain personal information of the blacklisted people is deliberately made accessible to the society and is displayed online as well as at various public venues such as movie theaters and buses. While some cities have also banned children of untrustworthy residents from attending private schools, and even universities. On the other hand, people with high credit ratings may receive rewards such as less waiting time at hospitals and governmental agencies, discounts at hotels, greater likelihood of receiving employment offers and so on. Yeah, so basically good citizens can get better job opportunities, their kids can go to universities, better universities, things like that. And bad citizens, hmm, they don't have life or their uh, functioning in society is greatly reduced. And this could be the same now if universal and basic income is implemented because this is obviously gonna get tied to other things like social credit score, good citizens that do everything exactly as the government wants them to do, get to eat, <laughs> and those who don't, I don't know, you, your life sucks from that moment. So this is why this is really dangerous because 
when we have power in our hands, at least some level, and we, for example, can run our own businesses, we can still dictate and decide about level of freedom that we have, for example, which is still way greater than that. So this is why I think this universal basic income is more like uh, free cheese on the mousetrap, basically. You know, a lot of people say that this is a part of a bigger agenda. You know, World Economic Forum is pushing similar things. Uncle Schwabi eats the bugs. Yeah, eats the bugs. Like this is the guy who <laughs> likes to push these types of ideas. Some other elements that could become implemented and work with universal basic income are you know social credit score system or cashless society and cashless society is another pretty much dangerous direction because governments want to have full understanding of how the money flows right and then you have big data companies and algorithms analyzing that data so they understand who is spending money in what way they can predict behaviors they can you know decide how to tweak things so the population is more under control because they understand their behaviors better their spending habits and things like that and then you know there is a full control over what do you do with your money as well so this is why these types of things like cashless society is also pretty dangerous as well and you know the more we for example use uh, credit cards debit cards and less cash the more of that is being implemented as well but you see the, the whole thing is always about full control and surveillance to have total control over population and full understanding of every little behavior of every single person and then when you're a bad citizen according to the standards of your government you're not gonna have life ah <laughs> oh, this guy is not a good guy he is thinking too much independently let's tweak his algorithms a little bit hmm? so you know his life is a little bit harder then the, there are other things like digital ids and you know technologies such as Neuralink to have people connected to the internet and things like that so basically all these things are moving towards total control of population on every single level and this is why it's very very dangerous now what are the solutions let's say first thing obviously it always starts with education right so sharing videos such as this one with your friends on social media is a good small step to make more people aware of these issues because the more people understand where this is heading right the better choices we can make to stop that from happening for example right so sharing information first step right letting as many people as possible know about these things joining protests whenever possible these are some some good steps another really important thing is supporting independent businesses as much as we can why this is really important because you know when we support big corporations we build monsters we give them money so they have all the money to develop automation for example and automation takes away jobs and this is what they keep talking about there's going to be a level where everything is going to be done by robots and you're going to sit on your ass and watch netflix and get that free money from government but if there is less automation right then people have more power they can do other jobs as well but if we buy from large corporations then obviously they have more money for research and development to create systems that replace workers right so this is one example this is also tied up to our own behavior because you know the more we support big corporations the more they become monopolies and then they dictate what happens to everyone else you know amazon destroying small businesses in this way you know all the tech giants like google like facebook twitter controlling information flow and deciding what is false information what is truth right so full censorship 
wouldn't happen if people would start joining smaller networks, if, if people would be spread in all sorts of networks. You know, I've been promoting different channels like Minds.com, like Rumble, like, I don't know, even Telegram for years. And no one wants to join these channels or very few people want to move from Facebook or YouTube or other places to these channels because people are lazy. They don't want to learn new social networking side, how to use it, which takes a couple of minutes. They don't want to set up a new account, which takes a couple of minutes. And this is the problem. Problem is that people rely on the system too much and they support the system too much. And I'm not saying it's easy to not support the system when we are part of the system, but the more we understand these things that we need to start relying less and less on massive corporations and support smaller businesses, for example, as much as we can, the, the more balance there is and the less power these corporations have to now replace everything. You know, destroy small businesses, automate everything so people lose their jobs, things like that. And put foundations for these systems like universal basic income or social credit score. And I'm not saying it's easy because, you know, you go to Walmart or whatever, Tesco, some of these massive corporations because it's more convenient. You buy from Amazon because, I don't know, you can buy everything there, whatever, sometimes it's cheaper and it's more convenient. Yeah, I understand these things. I do it myself sometimes but I try to make choices as well and think about these things more and more because really this is the whole thing it's about gradually making smaller choices here and there now you have option to go to a farmer's market near you or to Walmart or some other massive chain company think about that if you can maybe buy from local farmer if if it, you can afford it sometimes it's more expensive as well so obviously it depends but you know things like that as often as we can and make these uh, more conscious choices educate as many people as possible about these things by sharing content such as this video and similar things and then enough people start thinking and, and making rational decisions and then there is more balance and it's harder for these systems to develop. All right, hope this makes some sense or not. I don't know, let me know in the comments. What do you think about these things? Please share this video if it resonates. Uh, give it a like, please, please. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you are new here and follow me on Instagram. It's Mike Saigula on Instagram. And thanks for checking another video from True Fury. I'm proud of you. You made it all the way to the end of the video. That means you're paying attention. That's really good. I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Till next time.